So there's a problem. A lot of people are not able to retire at the traditional age of 65 because they don't have enough money in their accounts or their investments, or whatever the case is. And that is very sad, especially when you consider that we live longer now and people are not able to retire at a certain age. And it's looking like they're retiring more so at the age of 74 now. The root cause of this is because of the simple fact that no one really knows how much they should have saved by a certain age. So this video is all about the average savings by age. That way you will know how much money you should have saved by whatever age you are right now. Whatever point in life you are right now, you're gonna know the answer by the end of this video. I'm Reggie Bryant and thank you for tuning in today. We're going to get started right now. So first things first guys, this video is all about net worth and what net worth is, is all of your assets put together. So your cash, your investments, your retirement plan, businesses, real estate investing, whatever the case is that you have going on that is bringing money in, minus your liabilities such as cars, houses, your bills, you get the idea. So that's what your net worth is. That's what I'm talking about when I say this is how much you should have saved. I'm not just talking about just in your savings account. I'm talking about liquid cash plus investments plus retirement fund plus whatever else you have going on. So just so we're clear there, we're gonna really get started. So I'm going from the age of 20 all the way up to the age of retirement, which for this video say we're gonna say is the age of 65. So we're gonna start with the average savings by age 20. Are you ready for this? Zero dollars and zero cents. In fact, most 20 year olds or 20 something year olds have negative net worths because of debt, such as student loans, credit cards, or they have debt because they made an unwise decision and bought a car that they could not afford. And now they have to pay monthly payments on that car and it's affecting their finances. Or they might've moved into an apartment without a roommate or even with a roommate in a lot of cases. And because they're paying bills, they have their, their car payments, they have their student loans, they have their utilities and they have their rent. Right there, right there is why a lot of 20 year olds are unable to get ahead. And when you factor in the low income paying jobs that the average 20 year old has, th there's no wonder. And then when you factor in the cost of living, you really have to think about all these variables and that's really why the average 20 year old is not worth more than zero dollars and zero cents. And then, also, just to be clear, in this video, I'm going to definitely, definitely go over averages, but I'm also going to go over medians when it comes to net worth of anyone of any age, because average is just good to know, but the median is what's more accurate because the median specifically goes along the middle and it knows that the outliers are the outliers and it uses some really special mathematical formula to go through it, but it's way, way, way more accurate than the average because the average is just basically throwing a bunch of numbers into a blender and dividing it and you're not going to get a correct depiction of what should be what you have in your savings account. So don't get discouraged when you hear some of these average networks. Look at the median because that is way more accurate for you. And also, if you are one of the few 20-something-year-olds who are actually able to work a full-time job, start your 401k immediately. Right now is where it makes all the difference. I don't care if you're, you know, making the lowest pay in the facility that you're in right now. Like, having a 401k is going to secure your future. It just will. All right, so how much should you have saved in your 30s? Well, here's where things start to jump up. According to the Federal Reserve's, the average family, and again, keyword family, has a net worth of $76,200 for their entire net worth. And then the median is $11,100. Now keep in mind, these both of these numbers are factoring in families because typically people in their 30s have families. They have two sources of income, husband and wife. So you gotta keep in mind, this is factoring in people who are single, these are people who have families. So some people recorded, you know, their dual income for their entire household, you know, or if they're single completely and, you know, they're, they don't have a significant other or anything, then they're just reporting their one source of income, which is themselves, you know, their job or whatever the case is. And then you have to also think about people who were 
blessed to be millionaires at such a young age. There's those outliers who make ridiculous amounts of money, like those people on CNBC Make It, who are making like $210,000 at like 25 years old, or the, the 28 and 30 year old millionaires, and where the husband and wife are like, they work regular jobs and they make pretty high salaries on the regular jobs, but then on top of that, they they invest in real estate, or some people do YouTube, like Graham Stephan, he was on CNBC Make It, and they were you know showing how he was a millionaire and how he where he's living at and all that good stuff. And there's just all these variables that should really be taken into account. Like it's not normal for this to happen, but it is ideal, and it's something that I think everybody should aim towards though. That's factoring all those in there, so, don't get discouraged when you see a net worth like this because a lot of people in their 30s don't have that $11,100. Even at the median of $11,100, that sounds high because a lot of people don't have that because they're still drowning in debt from school, from cars, credit card debt. There's so many different forms of debt that someone in their 30s could be facing that we just don't know about. So keep that in mind when you listen to these net worths. A good rule of thumb is when you're in your 30s, you should have a full year of income and that should be your net worth. That's how it should be when you're in your 30s. So from the time that you're 21 to 30, that's what you should aim to have. And I somewhat disagree with the advice that, saying that you should have a full year of your income saved because what happens when you're 21 and then you're 23 and then next thing you know, your salary jumps up 12K and then next thing you know, you get a promotion and then it jumps up again. And then if you're in a really lucrative business and you're in a really lucrative field, then your salary is going to tend to jump. So in some cases, it's not really going to be that feasible to save that kind of money if your income literally doubles in less than 10 years. And it happens every single day. So keep that in mind. And this advice is really set for people who have more consistent incomes where they're generally like this. And then it, it might move up 3% a year, whatever the case is, based off performance or just based off the fact that you've held that job for a certain amount of time. That's just generally how it is. But that's my advice to you. Yes, and with the average annual income of the average American being 50K a year, and the average amount of debt is over $37,000, for the average American, it's very hard to say that anyone should have that net worth of $11,100 at the age of 30 or within their 30s because of the simple fact that it's hard to have that much amount of debt. You only get paid 50 k a year and you pay bills. So between there, you're probably going to get a negative number. So it's understandable if you don't have that net worth. If you're at the point in life where you're already in your 30s, and you're behind financially, you can still get ahead. You just have to save, you have to budget, you have to invest when you can and really make what you can of the money that you are getting so it can one day work for you and I actually have a video about that as well. All right, so if you've been wondering how much should I have saved by 40, here's your answer. The average savings by 40 is a whopping $288,700 while the median is just under 60K. Now again, there's a bunch of variables that people are not looking at when you're looking at this. There's a point I brought up earlier, but then you also have to think about the simple fact that a lot of 40 year olds, they have houses. And in the article that I read, it specifically says that what skewed the numbers ridiculously with this age group is the fact that they bought a house. And society sees when you buy a house, they see it as an asset. I highly disagree. I don't think that a house is an asset until it starts to bring money in your pocket. And for most Americans, houses don't do that. They do the exact opposite. Now, if you're a real estate investor or if you're renting out rooms in your house, yeah, then you can say your house is an asset. But if you're living in your house and you're paying the mortgage and the utilities and the maintenance and all the other stuff, liability, that's what it is. It's a liability. To add, by the time you're 40, you should aim to have double your annual salary. Also, I would like to add that there's a lot of other factors that really aren't taken into account. When you see these numbers, people don't think about the few parents in the world who are able and willing to pay their kids through college, typically putting themselves at a financial disservice. And that can lower the numbers of that net worth. Also, it's not 
factoring in the divorce rate, which is ridiculous, by the way, and that can obviously have an impact on your finances. And here's another thing. If you're in your 40s, definitely have your 401k dialed in. Make sure you have started it already because I can't tell you how many 40-something-year-old people have come up to me bragging that they have 50k in their 401k. And I'm like, what? Oh my God. That's not okay. You can't retire off of that. So just think about it that way. Think about longevity. Start investing in your 401k if you have not already. All right, you're gonna notice a pattern here and I'm gonna start sounding like a broken record pretty soon. So to kind of shift the focus off of that, when you're in your 50s, you definitely need to have triple your annual income. You just do. And the median net worth for a 50 year old is $124,200, which that's, it's starting to look a little more realistic now and more on par with what most people have today. Because like I said, most people can't retire. I really meant that they really cannot retire. And the sad thing is a lot of them don't realize it because they never really thought about how much money it really takes to retire. Like to a lot of people, a million dollars sounds like a lot, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's not because if you, if you retire with a million dollars, you're still not really gonna be able to live comfortably and then have money left over to do stuff that you wanna do, like go on vacation or go certain places or go visit family or do this or do that. And we're not even including medical bills that, you know, that risk increases as you get older. So there's a lot of things that, that people don't think about when it comes to retirement. But anyways, the average net worth for a 50 year old is typically $727,000. And that's a lot, that's a lot. And that's really where it should be because when you're in your 50s, you are getting dangerously close to retirement. So when you really think about how much you need to have saved by retirement, if, when you're in your early 50s, if you have 727000 already in there, okay, you're, you're looking pretty solid. You're going to hit that $1 million at least. I mean, definitely more than that, but you want to at least hit that $1 million. So when you're like, let's say you're 50 years old, you're going to want to have that much money in your 401k. You just will. All right, we're going to further break this pattern by letting me show you this real quick. When you're in your 60s, you're going to definitely, definitely want to have six times your annual salary. And here's why. When you're in your 60s, a lot of things are taken care of. The house is probably paid off. Multiple vehicles are probably paid off. Your kids are probably through school. So you have very little financial responsibility for them. They can probably take care of themselves. They probably have jobs. And there's there's a lot of things that should be taken care of. Your, your 401k should definitely, definitely be maxed out and you should have definitely been starting to put more towards that as you're able to. And honestly, I think your 401k should be maxed out anyways, no matter what age you are, but some people aren't always able to put in as much. So when you get older, that opens up opportunity, as long as you don't make bad financial decisions, it opens up financial opportunity to put more money within your 401k or other investments and also put your money into other areas to make your money work for you, such as a business, such as real estate. Now, here's another reason why I make such a big deal about median versus average. The outliers are ridiculous. When you're in your 60s, the average net worth is 1.67 million, which again, that's how it should be, but it's not. It's not. And the median is 187,000. Do you see how drastically different that is the median is more accurate to what America looks at. So don't ever go by averages, but I'm just sharing the numbers with you because I think they're good to know. And when it's finally time to retire, you're gonna need at least $1.06 million. The rule of thumb is if, you're, if you make over $70,000 right now, you're gonna need more than $1.06 million when you retire to live comfortably and pretty much do what you're doing right now just without having a job. That's just, that's how it's gotta be. And the median net worth of a retiree is $224,000. Crazy, just crazy. So I hope that during this video you learned that numbers are, 
people don't think about these numbers. And if they did, I guarantee you, the numbers in the article and that were expressed in this video would be a lot different and a lot higher. People that have extremely high salaries are the people who typically understand these numbers, that have planned ahead, that have started investing at very early ages and have started businesses and have done this stuff. And then the outliers that are on the way low end are people who just really don't understand or really make low wages or there's disabilities or there's, there's some type of something that is getting in their way. And then the median is literally just most people disregarding all of the outliers. And I hope that you watch this video and it changes your perspective if you didn't initially understand about how much money you should have by retirement or how much money you should have by 40 or whatever the case is. We should really be looking at money as in monetary goals. We go to work for money. We Basically everything we do is around money. It's whether we're working for someone else for money or we're working for ourselves, like we have our own business for money or we're doing real estate or we're doing investing or something, but none of it is guaranteed and money can be lost at an instant. You guys saw that the stock market crashed. Robin Hood completely went all the way down. It shut down. There's so many people talking about it. There's no toilet paper in the grocery stores. Like nothing makes sense anymore. You know what I mean? So just take this video and, and just get this perspective and, and really, really understand and learn as much as you can about finances, no matter what age you are. But obviously, the earlier, the better your future is going to be. A lot of people are paycheck to paycheck, no matter what salary they are. And that's why a lot of these medians are as low as they are, because of the fact that people don't always make the best financial decisions and it's unfortunate and a lot of people should educate themselves more but this is the channel to go to if you want to get on track financially if you want to learn about saving more money making more money skills that are required the personal development behind making money that is what this entire channel is about i hope you guys like this video i'm reggie bryant this entire channel is about personal growth and personal finance so you can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching